Picked up the Seth Thomas carriage clock. It's a Westminster chime. Uh, I usually get these for less than 50. I think I paid 40 or less for this one. Um, I got guys that I buy them from and uh, tell them like 10 bucks a hole or maybe a little bit better if the case is clean. So I got it cheap. Uh, of course it was sold to me as overwound. That's because it has the key in the back. No, it did. Anyway, they sell them as overwound when they don't run. Uh, probably just gummed up, needs to be cleaned and lubed. So um, I'm going to show you how I do it. Start by taking the hands off. Best to keep note of what time it says because it's easier if you're not going to move the movement uh, when you put it back together. Kind of remember where that uh, the time is set so you don't have to chase it. Not that big a deal otherwise because you can see you can make it whatever hour you want it. Very nice case. We're not going to do anything but wax this one. Right. Now, I gotta get the movement out, but the chime block's in the way. It's not that big a deal. Two more springs. It's a bit of a puzzle to remove them. They only come out one way usually. Eight screws holding the movement in. Looks like I might be the first one in here, which is really, really good. Uh, nobody's had a chance to really booger it up. Some would say that I'm about to, but, you know, thing's not running now. I don't plan on spending three or four hundred dollars getting it running. All right, let's get this set up on the vice. I've got the movement out and on the vise. Um, the Seth Thomas movement. I'm looking at these pivots. This is the back side. This is where you can see when you open the back door. And it looks like maybe this has been cleaned and lubed before some marks on the screws like somebody's had it apart maybe might be a little grease in there a little dirt sticking to it but the uh, interesting thing is there's the other side that's the side in the front nobody ever sees and even though the pivots don't look too bad, to me they look very dry, like they were never lubricated. Um, the bigger ones do, but it looks like the smaller ones were left to their own devices, and uh, as time went on they would bind up and uh, not work. Um, simple failure to make it clock come back I guess uh, in the automotive field that would be the same as uh, I don't know not greasing a tie rod in so you could sell one in six months well let's see what happens all right it's fully wound the balance wheel is not moving based on what I found on the front I think it was only ever looped from one side if it was and I'm thinking that one of the first shafts is probably a little tight in the bushing because the lube that they used dried up and turned into glue. Yeah, that's what happens. Now I use uh, synthetic oil. It wicks very well. It finds exactly where it needs to be and it sticks forever. I've had clocks running for 20 plus years on the stuff. Um, it's amazing. So. What I'm willing to bet is that as soon as I find 
that part, that one little spot that's tight and it loosens up with the oil, I bet that balance wheel starts moving. So let me see if I can get to one spot. Look at that. Off we go. So now that I got it running and I know what the problem is, uh, oh, slapped. Needs a little more. I'm going to go in and I'm going to lube from the back each one of these shafts just to make sure every single one is hit. Got some uh, oil in there and you can see it's starting to come around. I did massage it a little bit, uh, spun the wheel, moved the shafts back and forth a little bit. You can see it wants to keep going. Oil's working its way in there. It's amazing stuff. A couple more minutes, maybe a little bit, a couple more drops of oil. Then we'll set it up for testing. Another little uh, trick I know. Uh, try heating it up. Another minute or two heat, a couple more drops of oil, and you can see that the wheel is being driven by the movement as opposed to the wheel driving the movement. You can kind of see the effort. Another little uh, hack secret. Uh, they use the same lubricant in the spring barrels. Uh, so obviously that's going to be all gummy and heating that up helped it uh, But what we can do is we can go in through the spring Bracket here. There's a little hole You can add the fluid in there put that um, That oil in there and it's gonna wick like I said this stuff wicks very well See it just kind of soaking in there. It's gonna spread around. It's gonna find all that spring you're going to want to run the movement probably through an entire cycle to be sure, but uh, I'd be willing to bet you it would spread. Uh, it's been uh, running on a bench here for nearly an hour. Uh, let's see, it wants to run. The chimes are looking good. I'll show you how they go. Hammer's moving nicely. One of the things I wanted to show you, you know it's ready to put back in because when you turn one of these up, see the wheel stops moving? Well, that's because it's not in the right position. You just simply set it back down and it wants to run without touching it, you're good to go. So a couple of these pegs fall out. We're going to glue them in. Yeah, she's good to go. Right. She's been running solid for a while. I'm going to put it back in the case. Remember how that chime block went in? Hands. So the hour hand is adjustable. We need to set the minute hand at the correct position to get the correct chime. Might be.
nine. Let's go to twelve. some of those hammers. Let's see if we can adjust that way a little bit. Pretty good. Off to testing.